I'd like to introduce you to our stellar panelists. We have with us Dipit Purkayastha, co-founder and chief strategy officer in Shots. Ms. Himan Shigotam, business head, AmarUjala.com. Pradeep Gairola, vice president and business head, digital media, The Hindu Group. Sal Mr. Paneet Gupt, COO, Times Internet. We have with us Mr. Salil Kumar, CEO, Digital India Today Group. We also have on the panel Mr. Sanjay Trehan, digital consultant and former MSN India. And to share this session, we have with us Mr. Ankit Oberoi, CEO at Pushup. A very warm welcome to all of you. We are having a good day, and I'd request Ankit to take over the proceedings. Very Thank welcome. you so much, Kathy. Thank you so much, Kathy. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this discussion about the future of publishing and specifically focused on how publishing leaders are gearing up for 2021. Uh, we want to keep this discussion and session very, very engaging with the audience. So feel free to put in your questions in the comment box and I'll try to pick them up as I see fit, you know, as part of the discussion. I'm Ankit Obrai, co-founder and CEO at AdPushup, where we help web publishers optimize their programmatic strategy. We started this business in 2014, focusing on the US market first with customers like Reddit, Newsweek, CNET until about a year and a half back when we started looking at the Indian region and realized that a lot of Indian publishers have actually more US or international traffic in absolute terms than uh, some of their US counterparts, providing massive potential uh, for growth and opportunities. And I think we can do it way more profitably here uh, than in the US, uh, right here in India. I've personally been following the publishing and ad tech industry since the last 12 years. And um, I think there couldn't have been a better time for this discussion since it's only this year that we're seeing uh, India has truly woken up to digital. And uh, when I say this, I mean, in terms of the mindset, I think the numbers were always there. They just got better. Uh, up until this year, digital was always seen or thought of as an initiative for the future, will, which, which someday will reap benefits, but not the core business today. And boy, uh, they couldn't have been more wrong. Uh, what's also uh, interesting is that in the last 12 months alone, we have witnessed so many new innovations coming in and so many new, uh, you know, new initiatives uh, and inter interesting insights like subscriptions and paywalls. Uh, subscriptions and paywalls, which were earlier thought of as a monetization solution only for financial or business websites. I think that myth has been busted. Um, less, I mean, all of us know about video, but less talked about podcast, you know, so products like podcast or audio have proven to be profitable units in themselves. Uh, user generated and fan opinion centric content has some somewhat, you know, started challenging editorial style publishing uh, purely because of how agile and profitable the model is. Uh, and most importantly, programmatic has shown a sharp rise in contribution towards the overall revenue mix, uh, especially since uh, the last couple of years when programmatic has truly become open and uh, transparent, right? In fact, most uh, more than 60% of the market today uses open source auction technology and programmatic no longer is a monopoly now, like how it was for the last 15 years. Today, we have a wonderful panel uh, to discuss this uh, and you know also talk about what their biggest bets are for 2021. So let's begin with the route of introductions, starting with uh, Dipit. Um, and Dipit, just to make this a little more fun, uh, you know we've put in an icebreaker question uh, for you and for all the panelists, which I'd like them to answer after their introductions, which is, what would you do if your ad revenue tripled today? Uh, thanks, Ankit, uh, for. Uh, uh, posing the first question to me, like everyone on the panel is much more senior and everyone I have looked up to and kind of learned from uh, Puneet sir and uh, has been a real mentor to us as well, various stages of our life, uh, for in, like including the InShorts life and now uh, we've recently launched our new application called Public. Uh, so, um, uh, so this is Deepit. Uh, we run uh, two applications, InShorts and uh, public in public is more like a mass market twitter a video first mass market twitter for the bharat audience and uh, where we kind of get very hyper local influencers uh people like uh, the mukhya of a gram india has 2.5 lakh villages so we are, we are kind of getting these mukhyas and uh, gram panchayat level influencers and uh, the local police the local daroga uh, the local doctor you know 
to kind of uh, start communicating where, with their individual small townships and kind of gram areas and our uh, earlier product which is uh, more popular at least in the audience base that we are speaking to today is inshots which is basically a technology based uh, aggregator platform and uh, uh, we have a very global kind of footprint on that product and it's uh, it's for consumption of very short bite-sized content on the platform. So uh, that's mostly about us. The icebreaker question is, uh, it's, it's actually very tricky because everybody wants to invest their revenues back into things that can build moats for all of us. I think the moats are ultimately the same. I think that's a question that you will touch later in the uh, discussion around data and personalization so i think that's where uh, everybody is going to invest in so that my two cents would be like it's data and personalization is where we would want to invest perfect so i think uh, uh, it's very interesting to see i think and i think short, sort of shows our indian mindset which is the moment we say there will be growth we think of where will we invest right so so that's interesting to see uh himanshu do you want to go next um Himanchu, you're on mute. Good afternoon, everyone. So I did the ritual. So, you know, it's a very common thing. So you have to unmute in all these things. So uh, uh, good afternoon, my fellow panelists. Uh, and uh, this is Himanchu, and I'm representing Amarujala group today here. And uh, I've been here with the group for the last six years. And those of you who don't know Amarujala, uh, it's a seven decade old, uh, very loved uh, Hindi news brand out of North India. And we are also called the newspaper of hills. So we have huge uh, fan following into our states like uh, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh. And uh, we publish out of some 20 publishing centers, uh, our newspaper. And uh, the upcountry editions are actually north of 300. So we go really deep inside uh, wherever we operate. And on the digital side, uh, again, we get a lot of support from our newspaper. And it's uh, one of the very loved brand, Amarjala.com, into the digital news space. And uh, we try to cover like every day in the morning, uh, the complete team uh, gets up with just uh, one thing that how can we keep on enriching the life of our users or readers. And uh, so, so the journey is going on. And uh, so thanks to the whole internet revolution that we have seen, there have been like great numbers. And uh, we have been growing along with industry and uh, really feel privileged to get love of uh, all the millions of readers who come to us uh, every month. And uh, on the on the icebreaker question, I think that's a very obvious thing, uh, Ankit. So uh, if you go to any publisher, uh, so uh, we, we are mostly about our content. So we love to invest more into quality content and more into our product. And uh, for publishers to attract uh, technology talent is very difficult. So, uh, and if we are if we are thinking about to bring in more uh, personalized kind of products and uh, more AI driven kind of things and all, so obviously you need to have a very robust uh, technology platform. So yes, investments will definitely go in for improvement of uh, quality of content and um, product which is more uh, technology driven. Thank Excellent. You. Perfect. Uh, next up would be Pradeep from the Hindu group. Welcome, Pradeep. I, I'll come back to you. Perhaps, Puneet, do you, do you want to go next? And, and uh, Pradeep, we'll come back to you while the issue is getting solved. Sure. Uh, my name is Puneet, and thanks for uh, you know letting me be a part of this panel. I have been a, I have been a developer. I have written code. I have done product management. I have done marketing and growth. So I've been very lucky to be a part of every aspect of the digital ecosystem. In my current role, I am the chief operating officer of Times Internet, driving uh, growth across revenue and non-revenue metrics for the organization. If I, if my revenue were to triple, I will immediately call my collections head. <laughs> OK, that, that speaks a lot. <laughs> that, that explains a lot. But it's very interesting for me to see somebody coming from a developer side and then to product management and you know looking at very strategic initiatives. Um, so that, that's, of course, a slightly less known path, right, as we see in the industry. Um, Pradeek, uh, 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 let's try now, maybe. Uh, uh, I'm afraid we're still not able to hear you. Do you want to try maybe without the uh, earphones? Perhaps that might work. Uh, no, I'm afraid we're still not able to hear you. Yeah. I think it's a bit patchy, Ankit. The line is very patchy today. 
Sure. So, uh, so perhaps you know somebody in the team. Okay, that's perfect. We can hear you a little bit now. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Yes. Great. So, I think yeah, the technology uh, malfunctioning has now become a part of life. But yeah, like overall, it works. So, I am Pradeep Yadola. I lead the digital business of the Hindu Group. I've been working for about 30 years now. Most of my experience, other than six years in at tech, is in news media. I got into digital in 1997 and have been a close of keen observer and student of digital evolution. Last eight years, I have been working to develop consumer revenue. I joined Hindu in September 2018, and today I, along with the top management of Hindu Group, are focusing on transitioning the organization to its digital future. In the last two years, Hindu Group has actively experimented with consumer revenue for its digital business, and we have experienced some initial digital success, and that's very very promising for us. And I think uh, the moment you said triple of the your icebreaker question, my first thing was like uh, like Himanshu, I also thought that maybe the best place for us to invest would be the content because as of now also we are completely uh, like uh, majority of the revenue coming from the print makes it very very difficult to allocate larger resources to the digital business. So I think that's a big challenge. So the day this happens, we will be investing way more money in the our digital uh, journalism. Thanks. Great. Excellent. Excellent, Pradeep. Uh, Salil, would you like to go next? Yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Salil, and I look after the digital business for the India Today Group. Uh, if the revenue tripled, I think the first thing I'd be looking at uh, making sure how much incentive is going out to everyone. That will be a fantastic thing to happen. And uh, surely everyone will be delighted. Uh, we'd be investing money again back into going uh, into trying into, uh, I think data would be the first place where we'd be looking at how much more would go into uh, what kind of technologies and data can be still brought in. Uh, that'll be our area of focus. Um, that'll be it from my side to begin with. That's excellent. And I think I'll definitely come back to this, Salil. Uh, data is very interesting and in is part of our discussion today as well. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, and last but not the least, we have Sanjay. Uh, Sanjay is a digital consultant and uh, former MSN India head. Uh, Sanjay, welcome to the panel. And good to see you're joining in, I think, from, from the mountains, right? Uh, truly yeah. speaking of how the digital evolution has happened. Yes, I'm joining in from the hills in Uttarakhand. But, uh, and the audio is a little patchy, so I hope you're able to hear me, Ankit. Are you able to hear me? We can hear you fine. Oh, that's fantastic. So, okay, you've uh, you know, spent uh, close to two decades in the new media industry. I've worked with organizations um, like, uh, you know, the Hindustan Times, the Times Internet, uh, was with Microsoft India for six years, was the with the founding team of uh, India's first e-tailing portal, Jaldi.com. And now I have been for the last two years uh, consulting with some very exciting uh, startups. Uh, you know, Ad Pushup incidentally happens to be one of them, uh, one of the leading uh, players in the ad tech space. I am also consulting with a London-based company, which is one of the finest in the world in terms of paywall integration, paywall solutions. Uh, consulting with companies like um, uh, in the OTT space, uh, uh, which is essentially in the dialect-based OTT space, and in marketing automation space. So that's about me. And yes, if uh, since I am a sole operator, and Ankit, if my revenue tripled, I would buy lots of books and music. You know, I would give myself a treat. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So I, I was hoping, you know, answers more like this, you know, where publishers would come out and say, oh, you know what, we'll go on vacation for the rest of the year because we've, <laughs> we've tripled, you know, that's way beyond our uh, initial targets. And, you know, we'll probably enjoy the rest of the year or, you know, take the whole team out. But but that's that's okay. I think it's, it's nice to see a lot of you would invest that back into the business and perhaps, uh, you know, uh, expect even more returns next year. But I think we've, we, we have a good start for, uh, and opening for the you know first part of the discussion, and uh, you know I think all of us are aware that uh, how the consumer trends have been on digital platforms this year, and uh, most of us have already we're already seeing a massive surge in traffic or time spent, uh, which has brought with it perhaps you know higher infrastructure costs or ad serving fees. While the ECPMs then this year you know uh, themselves have not haven't been that great for the most bit, right? And on the other side, you also have this decades-old saying. 
about online businesses that you know get the users the money will always follow so we're not sure what's happening there then right so so my opening question uh, perhaps to you puneet uh, to begin with is uh, given this background right of increase in traffic but ecpms haven't been that great time spent and all the other metrics leading metrics are doing great uh, what is your monetization strategy for 2021 so uh, the first thing to understand is the traffic increase is because of an event right and some of it will stay but all of it will not stay right we have to be continuously at it to create meaningful value propositions for our consumers so that they keep on coming without a global event of this kind that happens and then that drives traffic higher but now that the traffic is there right how do we monetize in in this year there have been both ups and downs uh, most publishers thought this traffic will come and you know by just by doing a programmatic route they would be able to monetize but then along with this came the negative keyword list you know covid got into one of them and which was like 30 40 50% of traffic for many publishers so getting into next year i think at least i will focus on kyt which is knowing your tech right we have we have worked a lot on tech but i don't think uh we can just say that we are there yet we need to continue to work look at what's happening in the ecosystem right the buyer with whom you had a relationship with the buyer has become an algorithm so when the buyer is an algorithm you better figure out how your tech is doing in terms of what you are able to sell every impression is being bought right it's not and it could be a separate buyer for every impression separate price for every impression so this insights going in in the tech part of the the business is very crucial getting into next year as programmatic continues to grow excellent and and i think there are lots of areas puneet which i'd like to talk more about like you know for example as you said ai or tech is basically the buyer decisions are being made on data today either automated or even somebody looking at but decisions are not Uh, as much as a way of you know marketing or positioning but i think in some cases predominantly programmatic it's more data driven right and and uh, as you said uh, uh, temporary traffic versus permanent so i think these would be some interesting areas for you would like to cover but but perhaps uh, pradeep do you want to talk about maybe uh, what is your organization uh, thinking or perhaps what are your thoughts on you know 2021 and the monetization strategy uh, given this background sure So, see, like Ankit, unlike most of the, you know, we were extremely lucky when it comes to, like, well, the overall business in 2021 was very, very bad. But uh, you know, especially because we are a print dominant business. But as far as the digital is concerned, it was a, it is an exceptional year for us. So between the period April to October, we are growing about more than 50 percent than last year. And this practically happened because of just one large reason, which was the reader revenue. So we. So in last two years, what happened? Like in February 2019, the company decided to build a subscription paywall, and like we had all the reasons that it is not going to work. But but we, you know, like of course the thing was okay. Let's try it out, kind of a mindset. But I think with COVID, what happens? The increased like for a lot of people with this increased traffic did not monetize. For us, actually, it ended up monetizing very well. So so what happened? Like in so this year, our subscription revenues will will be more than what we were able to develop advertising revenue in last 25 years. So currently in this year, we will have more than 50% of revenue coming from subscription. So I think that was a so that actually helped us to grow and grow substantially over the last year. Second thing was that see like see the advertising business requires a scale, and when it comes to a scale, we are just about say 40 odd million monthly user. So at that scale, it was very very difficult to really reach out, build a sustainable organization. So we started working towards transitioning. So so we have a aim of killing the digital department by 31st March, March 2023, and make the company digital. So now one of the steps in making the company digital was that you merge your print sales team as well as direct sales team to build a solutions team. Now that move first two months did not work for us. April May was the learning period, but after that it started really doing well. Currently, we have more than 100% uh, growth on our direct sales business, and I think by the year end we will have 200% growth over last year on our direct revenue. Right. So, but yes, programmatic is something where we saw a lot of decline in the yield, but overall because of the uh, you know direct sales becoming much bigger, we will be growing in advertising reader revenue coming in a big way. That is going to you know that's the reason we are growing 50%. But 
Beyond that, we had one very, very large thing which is going to help us in a big way. So you see, you have to understand Hindu does not do celebrity personal life, which means a direct, we don't do astrology. We don't do a lot of things which actually build a lot of traffic, right? Now, that's the added policy. I can go and fight and put my head, but nothing much. You know, like, but the fact remains that the, that the company decides that, yes, this is what it is. And it might be a long term. I would like to do celebrity content. I might want to do, but then at this point, we don't do. But what has happened with this traffic, especially reader revenue and this our experiment with the you know merge sales force has told us that the same user base we can perhaps grow four times without any additional pressure to get audiences. And that's pretty liberating because you know when you are when you are working with a mindset where you are very, very opinionated, you are very, very about editorial and all that, you will not so I will have a longer book of not do than what will I have for do. You know, so that actually helps in a big way. So for as far as we are concerned, our 21 is based, our 21 journey will be based a lot on our successes in 20, which will be basically a lot more focus on the reader. And I can talk maybe about it later Then you know, like more on, you know, like changing advertising mix towards, uh, you know, like more rather than just going for the traditional advertising, go for a more higher value yielding advertising kind of a stuff that could be the third. And data is something where I think, you know, like all the publishers in India have to do a lot. I was dealing with like, you know, WIC and all that. When you look at your data journey, suddenly you feel almost threatened that you are not even started, you know. So that's a very, very large opportunity as far as the 2021 is concerned. Excellent. No, no, this is very uh, refreshing to hear, uh, Pradeep. And I think uh, key insights, you know, for, I mean, it's actually very good to see that, you know, how you guys have built a very long term strategy all the way to 2023 and are taking bold steps, right? Like making actually industry leading bold steps and also that. Um, I'm surprised to hear, you know, that your subscription uh, paywall sort of business is doing so well already, which is, uh, I think, sort of unheard of in a lot of markets, right? So, so congrats on that. Uh, Salil, uh, what, what are your thoughts on 2021? How, where do you think, uh, you know, the monetization ship is going to go next year? So I think a lot of uh, monetization is going to move towards audience monetization. Now, what we are basically seeing a lot of uh, users looking at or advertisers wanting to tell a story. Their basic aim is that how do you weave uh, their their story into your content? How do you create content which is specific to their needs and requirements is what I'm seeing. It's a mix of audio, video and text. Uh, those are the combinations. I think your um, the dam will be the most important factor in terms of your ability to have audience that are already mapped up. Uh, today, if you notice, uh, most of the FANG organizations are living on audience. They're choosing on that only. It's like, I know the preferences. I know their needs. Uh, I have their database where somebody's gone and bought some mutual funds or somebody's shown some interaction. Those are the opportunities. And again, Going forward, you're looking at obviously, I mean, there's a, like I said, there's a mix of your video. There's a mix of audio. It's also looking at creating content that's going to be, people will ask more and more content to be created, which is uh, being able to get the uh, advertiser, tell the story for an advertiser and also get the audience engagement because you will want to get your audience engaged. And uh, I mean, it's going to be a shift towards, um, I see a lot of it moving towards digital, like we are into TV, print, radio, podcast. Uh, so a lot of money is obviously shifting towards the digital side. And this current pandemic has been a catalyst. It's taken us at least five to seven years ahead of what we would have normally progressed. Uh, as far as paying on subscriptions right now, I'm a little skeptical. Don't see it happening in the next one or two years. But again, you never know when tight turn. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. But at least I think the only silver lining here has been at least as far as all digital businesses are considered, uh, you know, decades worth of work has happened, you know, in, in probably weeks this time. And and on that, Himanshu, uh, what, what are your thoughts as far as, you know, the monetization strategy for, uh, for your business is concerned? So we also have like almost similar thoughts, you know, Ankit, and uh, we were the first uh, Hindi uh, newspaper to go behind the paywall when it comes to our e-paper. So we did it sometime last year, much ahead of the pandemic, uh, pandemic and all. And the reason has been simple. The ECPMs uh, for Hindi publishers have always been a challenge when it uh, when you compare yourself with the English publisher. So ECPMs that you go out and command out into the market, uh, they actually give you a lot of trouble. 
and uh, obviously uh, hindi being the uh, the main language of the country so you always have like more number of users coming in but, uh, but the realization from the users uh, is is difficult so we realized it much early and uh, to keep on uh, retaining those users and to make them register on your platforms again and to educate them uh, with the whole digital thing and keep them coming back with the same email id and all it's been a big challenge because they tend to forget their email ids they're trying to log in again and you have to really lend them a helping hand over there so that has been a big challenge uh, with hindi readers and uh, so uh, the some things that have worked in our favor is obviously the whole trust factor the credibility factor because i think that's the underlying uh, stone for anyone to build up some strong communities uh, which can be monetized so uh, i can talk about it so I, uh, there are two businesses uh, which we have built riding on to this whole uh, content thing uh, one has been into the education space and uh, we have launched our tech offering called safalta.com which helps uh, people to make uh, make them career ready because uh, those were the things which were being most consumed on to our portal we were seeing a huge uh, uh, interest into something called nokri sarkari nokri and all so uh, we were able to build up those community uh, over a period of year and today we have a, a commerce led offering uh, taking care of uh, that uh, vertical for us uh, the second piece was this what pradeep mentioned that uh, hindu group doesn't do that's astrology and uh, we've been uh, again uh, building a solid community around astrology for uh, more than couple of years and again we have a offering called my jyotish over there it's a commerce led offering where we are helping people with their e pujas we are helping them with their consultations and we are trying to take away uh, you know take away the whole problem of that uh, trust again you know that that persists out into that uh, vertical and all so uh, so live examples of uh, building uh, communities and then monetizing them uh, through uh, again the end user kind of revenues so that has been important uh, e paper uh, uh, again behind the paywall so that has been important so a healthy mix of uh, advertising and end user revenues so that's our strategy and uh, i was i was going through some pwc report uh, which was not very encouraging which said that uh, current 50 billion dollar of uh, advertising revenue will come down to around 36 billion dollar in next 5 years so again so that's a great signal for all of us to keep on uh, focusing on to uh, subscription revenues also and uh, uh, paywall revenues also alongside uh, advertising great great himanshu thanks for that and i think it's interesting to see how you're using this audience to build your own e-commerce offerings right so maybe the lower ecp ecpms in the hindi language are a blessing in disguise right because it's forcing you to innovate actually and you can say right? uh, although i think the advertising as far as the advertising revenues are considered i i have a different opinion but i think uh, uh, it goes without saying right that for a publisher today there should never be like uh, you shouldn't put all your you know eggs in a single basket right and it's good to see a combination of paywall or you know e-commerce offerings Uh, of your own so so on that uh, dipit uh, you have a very different view of of the world right coming in from a more sort of a app first experience or you know majority of your users how they work you know or even the age brackets that they are in like maybe perhaps right so so what are your thoughts on monetization and how do they differ uh, from you know a, a publisher which is more spread out on web web app you know across properties where you are predominantly focused on very different form of media content focused on very small at attention spans right and mostly app users yeah so um firstly i don't think world view can be very different because everybody is in the same ecosystem it's the same audience everybody is catering to different segments in that audience but uh, really the picture is almost the same for everyone uh everybody is trying to see ki bhai us audience se sabse easily kaise like what is the easiest way to kind of uh, monetize them uh what has helped us a lot uh, in our in short journey till now is that we have been able to um get those users who are the young professionals of the country digitally transacting audiences and who are uh, uh, even if their income bracket may not be very high they might still want to own an iphone so that's the audience that we have and very exclusively that is we have a very high concentration of an of that kind of an audience so i think that's the that's the key differentiator that we kind of are able to sell in the market and uh, that is why the regular our regular ad clients are kind of spending on us going forward i think there is a, a big change in the way we are thinking of monetization uh, especially because of our new application public uh, and we have traditionally been uh, good at 
any kind of uh, solving problems which are platform driven product driven and technology driven kind of marrying these three and understanding the nature of content and the packaging of content and like not telling us ourselves that we are journalists i think that is uh, a key realization that we have internalized in a long time that we respect the content creators of the industry and we want to solve problems that are more in our domain which is platform product and technology so from that perspective uh, when we started this application public uh, what we realized was that the consumption needs uh, we were solving the consumption needs of a very different kind of an audience uh, what we were doing is that we were for the first time internet enabled uh, something to happen on public on the public app which was not traditionally possible which was that uh, hype at a hyper local level in a crowd sourced way you could generate content that was relevant for not just a district but also a town center an urban center and probably even more grassroots uh, probably a village as well so india has about 2.5 lakh villages 10000 urban centers across 250 districts and so that supply chain how do we kind of create a platform that can enable and uh, kind of keep on reinforcing that supply chain of content is what we are building and i think that will inform our monetization strategy also uh, going forward so what we are trying to do is up, uh, uh, traditionally we used to remember that the distribute uh, the newspaper distributors used to distribute the newspapers but they had these other forms of revenue generation where a local businessman used to print out pamphlets and go to the newspaper distributor give them ki aap is area mein batwa dena and that was a 500 rupee 1000 rupee 2000 rupee probably in the 1000 to 10000 rupee bracket kind of an advertising spend that was happening offline and that has not successfully migrated online yet so that will only be possible if we are able to do a diy kind of platform and also people realize that value like people won't spend on this platform if they see ki are yaar 4000 rupees lagaye the mere ko to koi visit se nahi mili the local mithai wale ko jab wo offer chalayega ki bhai abhi diwali aane wali hai ye discount chalega they need to see local people visiting because of that offer so that is the engine that we are trying to build and that will inform our monetization strategy going forward that how do we kind of unlock that advertising potential jo hai hamare market mein and kind of leverage that in our uh, it will be a long journey we realize that it won't happen overnight it will take a lot of effort uh, because uh, the local advertising market is structured in a very different way currently uh, uh, so we'll have to look at innovative ways of kind of um, uh, working on that so but that is but it will be a very much platform driven technology driven approach uh, to monetization Excellent, Dipit. And I think uh, that SMB business does not exist in a lot of places online today, right? I mean, while w whatever you see on the digital advertising side today is coming from large brands or large, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, organizations, but nobody's been able to, you know, like per perhaps the audience which media just died goes to today, right? For listing, yeah. nobody probably has that penetration in advertising today. So great, great to hear that. And and Sanjay, since you look at the ecosystem more from a very broad perspective, you work with so many uh, of you know uh, partners. You you are interacting with so many publishers. You have a strong network. What are you seeing? You know, what are some of the biggest uh, you know uh, objectives or initiatives which you're seeing publishers bring for 2021? Yes, uh, Ankit. In fact, I am very enthused about the fact that. The year 2021 will be really the year of the reckoning for the digital industry, you know, because the digital transformation has been accelerated by COVID and a lot of naysayers have now fallen apart. The challenge in 2021 will essentially be monetization, primarily because now the audience has already moved in. And how do you leverage these increased massive uh, volumes of eyeballs? So without actually uh, going to, into too much of detail and in the interest of time, I essentially see five specific trends happening in 2021. Uh, we discussed about the ad tech stack optimization. So in the age of, uh, you know, programmatic, where, uh, you know, programmatic is going to rule the roost, definitely between the middle and the lower part of the, uh, the monetization pyramid, the optimization of programmatic initiative will actually be the key driver of revenue enhancement. I see that as one very solid trend. Um, also, Salil talked about audience, uh, you know, monetization. So audience monetization will also happen not just on deck, but also off deck. By off deck, I mean 
how do you leverage the audience that you have which is not on your platform but outside your platform so i'm essentially talking about optimizing social communities how do you leverage your communities uh, to uh, create uh, a sustainable engagement and revenue that's a very specific second trend i see the third trend is optimization of short form video and uh, monetization uh, you know that that doesn't need elaboration branded content and branded solutions you know in an age of falling ecpms and 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 a rise of first party data branded solutions will actually uh, you know gain currency and and pradeep did talk about it and um, lastly i see uh, i see uh, and i do agree with uh, with uh, pradeep and himanshu uh, and and slightly disagree with salil on this i believe 2021 will be the year of subscription we already see you know the times group coming very strongly into subscription with et prime and times prime we are seeing early success stories of hindu already happening we are seeing money control pro doing exceptionally well and the numbers rising and the business standard and um, you know indian express now coming in i see year 2021 will be the year of subscription for india and and um, these are the five monetization trends that i see gaining currency and consolidating excellent thanks sanjay in fact uh, this has uh, the discussion is uh, very very insightful from all of you and uh, definitely you know um, uh, there's so many questions which i have that i i don't think i'll be able to put all of them across but you know it's very interesting to see that all the leaders today here are bringing a very strong long term thinking and um, and i think the the role of a leader is uh, in a way right to balance long term and short term thinking as well because you can't forget about the short term while you're looking at the big picture almost like having you know telescope in one eye and a microscope in the other right so uh, while i'll be generalizing here but i think uh, one key area where i think the publishing industry today lacks right, also or, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt but it's also easier to talk about the long term you know <laughs> so that is also the reason <laughs> because there's nothing tomorrow when you wake up you have to do right so <laughs> great the no no you're right but i think translating that into the short term plan right or uh, breaking that down into the objectives you know how do you get to that long term plan right is where a leader true leadership comes right otherwise all of us can come and give gyan right but it will be just that uh and i think that's what uh, you know segregates a true leader so so you know while i'll be generalizing i think but one area where i think publishing sort of the industry at large uh, sort of lacks is you know lateral thinking right um, like how do i bring in solutions or the best strategies from other industries to our publishing business and i think that reflects on not only the initiatives but also the how the organizations are structured you know while some of you may be an exception here um, i can tell you look, look at you know how uh, the industry at large looks at uh, you know uh, their org structures you have very few uh, organizations really building to world class product strategy or technology teams and when they do you know they have very weak org support or the lack of right direction data is you know as we were talking about not given even enough attention uh, look at you know the most important metric in the industry is, is always cpm or maybe best case scenario page rpm right very rarely do we go to and learn from maybe the app industry here about you know average revenue for user right what is arpu uh some of you may be again to be, be an exception to this but the industry at large for example would not be considering that or that when we think of subscription right we fail to sometimes realize that one of the most successful industries when it comes to subscription businesses is the saas world uh, software as a service subscription businesses right so can we borrow some uh, you know fundamentals from there and you know we actually a lot of uh, examples perhaps maybe in the us right or like a philadelphia inquirer or the dallas morning baltimore sun which have actually brought some of these ideas and have built very strong subscription engines uh, whereas we probably have more uh, you know international traffic than some of them so so you know what would be some of these key strategic misalignments right uh, to the leaders here right what would be some of these key strategic misalignments which come to your mind across the industry which are prevalent or maybe it's, you know which you want to solve for 2021 um, sameer do you want to go, take that first when you say misalignment i really don't know and you know it's like a strategy to each one uh, today what happens is it's more dependent on your strategy in terms of having a signed in user arpus or when you're talking about uh, working on revenues per user structure for an app ecosystem it still is little bit easier and again if you've got a signed in user you're able to pull out some uh, i was hearing sanjeev again when when you're talking about it, you know somebody may say 
subscription is the right way we are saying it's two years ahead is the time to invest today in subscriptions yes it is you are aligning when you are putting up your audience or you are creating those buckets today and somebody may say okay it's you know it was two years back you should have done that um i don't think there is anything wrong or right you know when you say misaligned um it's like timings it's somebody who's timing it right and somebody who's timing it a little late that's how i would like to look at it um for example this conversation about programmatic and we i heard a lot about programmatic and a lot of programmatic monetization but ask any of the publishers how happy are they with the yields they are able to generate out of the programmatic revenue then you are talking about mass audience you are talking about mass and when you are talking about mass who's owning that ecosystem today it's not that me puneet himanshu or anyone else maybe we put together and we say okay but programmatic revenues are again it's like an open exchange and the price factor while we are focusing on it is going to be ranging for hindi and english in two digits and sub you know maybe half a dollar below half a dollar now is that the revenue that's going to grow us no because that's going to be that's only going to suffice some level and i also see on the other hand in shorts where dipit is talking about we see they are not using as much as any of the open market auction model and they are going purely towards high end premium brands and dipit i'm not somebody who's really analyzing but i'm saying what i see most of the time what i hear is what it is so i could be wrong and you can correct me there but you know programmatic is mass and there you are having a challenge of the fang organization you are talking about an apple you are talking about google you are talking about facebook you are talking about amazon and you are talking about other players who are going to take the mass way so i'd say you got to put up your priorities in terms of like i said you know having a right dam in place having the right audience mix in place trying to segregate and look at is there ways that you can monetize better your audience at a higher premium how can you be a better storyteller publishers will need to look at that front sanjay mentioned again monetization and i'm again saying some people would like we india today have a lot of offline programs events we used to do they were all moved online right and we want to go back offline as soon as the market's open because we realize what people are willing to pay for offline audience that physical environment is very much higher as compared to just pure pure play digital it's not that they're not paying it's not the values are not but i'm sure there's a huge difference so i again say it's a question of timing some believe that i mean you know i heard sanjay say what's up for usli indian express times now they are e paper guys there are papers which are coming every day i am more uncomfortable in today's time to buy a paper because it touch hand touch and feel how many hands touched it therefore i'm not buying it but i want to read the paper and that's an old habit the next audience is not into reading that paper you will have a problem where the guy will come and yeah. say yeah. Uh, i mean my kids 16 year old is not interested he is happy with his laptop and he is happy with his machine and he looks at the paper or the website and in fact at times he'll turn around and say listen this is stale news the the ajo died last night i mean we were lucky still to pick it up today so yeah. so salil i mean i mean you 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 are spotting right about that but i think when you say that how the audience buys you know uh, offline versus online wouldn't you say that um, I, i mean my perception is it's then a pricing challenge right and we are all aware that programmatic has always seen this very lower cpms so you know it's more of a pricing challenge how do you reposition this product in your programmatic using maybe certain other aspects of uh, programmatic direct or such campaigns to bring it to a truer value right and perhaps position in a way that you are able to bring and command that premium right which are all opportunities for us right? completely agree no no i'm not saying but what you're doing is your brand business is shifting between programmatic towards say programmatic guarantee structures audience again they're only looking at audience i mean otherwise if if you are a smart buyer let me turn it around and say i'm a publisher but i also know if you're a smart buyer you turn it around come on from the exchange perspective you can buy cheap right and that's because we've left it over as publishers correct correct and that's right we are forced, forced to leave it over because 85 to 90 puneet is smiling from there but 85 to 90 is the audience i mean your inventory is still available is we are not running short of inventory yeah. we may we yeah. have to see that our content becomes prime content becomes pristine that people are willing a to pay for it b 
to buy the audience who reads that super good content. Makes sense. And I just realized I looked at the clock and wow, boy, this was so interesting <laughs> that you know I got so immersed into this. But this but perhaps you know would love to hear. Yeah, this definitely is a topic which you know we should we should uh, probably set up a time again to talk about. But uh, I, I mean, uh, given the interest of time, w- would love to have all of you maybe chip in here as well. I would love to go have gone around the room, right? But perhaps Puneet, Himanshu, Dipit, uh, Sanjay, and Pradeep, would you like to add in something here? You know, what are your thoughts on how do you fix this uh, challenge today? See, I I personally think see, like no. there is a always going to be a publishers need to know multiple sources so we are going for subscription but we always understand advertising is going to remain critical for our survival and growth right so it is always going to be that way so it's not that you can just uh, our, our our scales are so big that we just can't survive on one sources of revenue we need a multiple sources of revenue only thing which i feel will make us successful is this culture of experimentation like i will tell you like i have made decision worth crores which have gone wrong but my company did not come to me and say that boss i am holding you responsible they said boss fine cost of learning move on so if we are if we succeed in one out of 10 company says you have done a great job if we succeed one out of 20 they said good job and nothing called failure everything is cost of learning right yeah, i think if that culture gets built we will be able to experiment there is a lot of experimentation required to figure out what will work and what will not work what has worked in the past may not work in future and that's the way it is going I Excellent, and I think. Go ahead, Puneet. One is to, uh, as you know, uh, Pradeep said, you know, figure we are, we all of us need to figure out what is the right revenue mix. We are looking at two years and three years down the line, because you know you can't start working today and change it for the next quarter. If there there needs to be a build up, and when you do that build up, it's very important to figure out what's the right org design. The organization design that we do for a subscription business is going to be very different from an org design that we will do. for an advertising business but interestingly both of them will lie together right so that is where the most meaningful aspect of this comes through how do you make two different uh, kind of organizations who exist and work together and build it for your your company the second thing i'm the best or, or build the best of those right build the bring the best of their learnings and their design into the way you operate right absolutely absolutely the second thing i want to say is that uh, you know most publishers are leaving that 80% of the market saying that we don't have capability but we need to build capability we all of us are competing in a 20% market and complaining about cpm falling because inventory is growing there's a glut of inventory right when all of us create content of the same kind voice video vernacular and then we say okay invent you know these systems are falling it's our own doing right so how do you get into that other 80% and start to compete in that side as well by defending your claim this 20% and for that a lot of new learnings have to come right a lot of stuff that everyone else talked about the data management platform that salil said is focusing on the kind of programmatic insights that everyone else said i would go ahead to say you know and you talked about that people usually end up by writing cpm ctr rpm how do you go beyond you know can you look at a cvr because that's the ultimate metric your yeah. customer will pay for right the number of leads number of conversions and your ability to convert that becomes very very important so right now we are thinking as public i'm not thinking for my customer i'm saying as soon as ad is the job done but the job is done when the property is purchased not even when the lead is delivered so how can we get build up to that level also what is the customer to really say that look at every lead differently because you know lead that comes from a standard large platform is going to be different that comes from us of the conversion percentage of the value of the conversion Well, it's not that number of leads per rupee makes sense, and and I think the data will play a very strong role, right? When when we have to work on connecting all these pipes, right? Seeing the actual conversion, the data plays a very critical role here. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Dipit, do you want to add something here? Uh, no, I think uh, this was can... really informative. Also, um, I think what is one thing that I have seen is that ultimately it's about how much inventory. like as punit uh, sir said that if the same inventory same audience is getting available across five platforms obviously the leverage is with the buyer to drive down the price uh, so i think uh, what is really uh, w- what makes a difference here is that if you can get retained audiences segmented across user bases and i think that retention cracking that retention is uh, it will always be an innovation driven exercise and not a 
uh, uh, not a expansion driven exercise it will always be innovative and there will be new and new models of uh, kind of getting a different kind of audience hooked for a different kind of time period you know like there will be there will be so much more innovation going forward like suddenly we see tiktok in the market suddenly we'll see something else so i think uh, uh, how do we uh, make sure that the startup ecosystem and the media ecosystem can kind of work together on this is really really very important and uh, i think that will create a lot of value for both the media ecosystem as well as the start startup ecosystem makes sense but and i think uh, retaining your audience and engaging with it is a is actually yeah. a dedicated topic in itself which we should definitely actually, cover himanshu and so sanjay I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah i'll i'll make yeah. one quick comment actually uh, as as puneet mentioned know your tech i i think uh, it's it's about uh, also knowing your customer so i i'll, I'll put it like that and that's going to make a lot of difference in days to come because what i personally felt is this that we have been kind of blindfolded by this whole advertising thing and the whole rush of uh, getting those uh, visitors on your site you know the comscore driven thing 60 million users 100 million users 150 million users so those are all visitors to your site those are not your customers those are not the signed up uh, thing as salil was saying and all so once we have those people signed up with us once we they are logged in kind of people we know them and we know what are their taste and preferences and accordingly uh, i love to do a, a, a kind of a emailer for them and uh, not one emailer in which my editor is deciding some 10 pieces of uh, articles but thousand emailers uh, uh, you know targeted uh, for uh, for those kind of uh, uh, taste and preferences of those uh, set of users and all that i think a lot of it uh, uh, will lie there Great, perfect. Um, uh, the acronym that I, I I was just sharing earlier, right? So in in my mind there are three of these that go together, right? There is a know your customer, who's buying, and then do we have the deep relationships with those customers? You know, the more there is a there is a movement towards programmatic, which is great for transparency, but there has to be a movement towards more direct sales, which is great for relationships. You know, you understand the mindset and the need of the customer, and then you can service them better. so there is a kyc know your customer there is a kyu know your user where all the dmp and everything comes up and then to mix and match both of them and deliver then they will be really content i'd probably add to that puneet okay. there should also be a know your data right uh, yeah. given the same okay. San- sanjay I, yeah over to you i can i can i can you know this is a very very insightful conversation and i can actually uh, sort of gleam five uh, five buzzwords out of this and so i i am thinking of data technology you know personalization uh, optimization and community now if you if you look at this you know if the insights that you can mine out of data and if you are able to personalize your advertising and content and you are able to optimize your ad tech stack to be able to have a meaningful conversation with the community uh, that you have and you do this in an innovative manner you are done so you know this these are the things that will be the key lever levers of uh, monetization uh, in the coming year so this has been a very fascinating discussion i must say absolutely sanjay personalization is key but you know we'll see how how that shapes once uh, we we get you know all these regulations in place but uh, i think i wish i, I would have loved, loved to speak more about it but i think since khyati is here she's pointing out that you're <laughs> running out of time Um, yeah. Do we have time for some audience questions? Cat, yes. Some audience Cat, questions. Do we have some time? Yeah. We have yeah. five minutes, I guess, right? Kathy, do we have time for yeah. that, right? Yes. Yes, okay. we do. And I'm sorry, my appearance on screen happens to be the cue for ending the session. But we have a couple of questions from our audience who asked on many different platforms where they are watching us. So one of the question is uh, if panelists can spotlight on new solutions around content marketing, messaging, and technology. if any one of you would like to take that up so i think content marketing and technology platforms right i mean while uh, it will be a slightly different topic right uh, but um, uh, perhaps uh, i think with content marketing it's more about distribution which i were you know thinking about and uh, uh, and i think today there are various channels perhaps uh, some of the panelists would might want to talk about maybe i don't know how do you look at social when you look at content marketing what are maybe other um, partnerships that you've built perhaps if you want to cover that uh let me ankit let me take that because this is a subject i'm very fascinated by so khyati uh, this is a good question but i see two very divergent trends 
as far as content marketing is being concerned. And it is like as if these two divergent trends, and these are not convergent trends, but divergent trends in content marketing. So I see proliferation of content marketing happening at one end because of the voluminous uh, content being produced and the audience with uh, the growth of audience. So content marketing proliferation is happening at one end. But on the other end, I also see that the credibility and the trust being increasingly diluted. So the challenge that the content marketing uh, is going to face is to, to reach consumers and gain their trust. And this whole trust element is the reason why uh, uh, the subscription is going to grow. Because in a, in a world where you are looking at multiplicity of weeds, you will not be able to sift the uh, you know kernel from the shaft. And that is a challenge the content market is going to face as, as it grows unchecked. In our case, we actually ended up uh, reducing the distribution of the content because we realized that the content is available everywhere. Why will anybody pay for it? But see, there is another area which we are looking at that would, would some publishers be interested in buying our high quality content? So that syndication pieces in a much more, so syndication earlier was always seen as a very large kind of a thing, but micro level syndication, like I'm only giving 30 stories to some other publisher, those kinds of opportunities are something which can unlock some more value to the content that we are creating. But otherwise speaking, in a, in a, in a subscription economy, if my content is available everywhere, my chances of monetizing... I often say that you aggregate users or distribute content. So both of these models somehow have a difficulty working together. If you're a digital native, uh, a digital new digital born, then obviously you have to start by distributing content because you need to be known. But if you have a presence, then you may want to do more of one than the other. So it also depends on the life cycle of as a business where you absolutely, are. Right? Absolutely. To each his own. You know, nothing is right or wrong, but it, uh, there's something right for each life cycle stage. Makes sense. Most of the legacy publishers actually might have so much of trust in the market, most of us, that all the audience believes us a lot. And that's the reason in the difficult time, a lot of people come to us and, you know, like, benefit from the kind of work which we have been done for decades or two. Yeah, excellent. So, so you know, I think maybe perhaps uh, the panelists can stay back and interact with the, the audience on maybe Twitter or all these platforms that we create. Uh, but, you know, it, it's been such a pleasure to have all of you here, you know, have uh, all the eminent publishers on a single stage online. And, you know, thank you so much, Himanshu, Pradeep, Sanjay, Puneet, and Salil. Dipit had to actually leave in between. He was hard pressed for time. But thank you so much for joining in. Really, it was really insightful. And we hope to have a follow-up discussion sometime soon and, you know, go really in depth in more some of the topics which we stirred upon today. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.